Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues in public health, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from the World Health Organization in Geneva. First of all, I am sorry not to be able to be with you in person in Durban for what sounds like a really exciting and important conference. And thank you again for allowing me to send you this brief video message. Let me introduce myself. I am Saumya Swaminathan and I serve as the Chief Scientist at the World Health Organization, a position that has been recently created for the purpose of harnessing the power of science and innovation for the benefit of all countries. We intend to make cutting-edge science available to all. The creation of the Science Division has been one of the most exciting innovations in the transformation of WHO led by our Director General, Dr. Tedros. And we want to make sure that the Science Division stays ahead of the curve and is really able to harness the emerging technologies, the innovations that we see all around us, um, not just in health products, but also in the digital field and artificial intelligence and so on, and, and be able to look at both the public health benefits of these new technologies and tools, um, but also the potential risks and the ethical uh, challenges that we all need to face when we have to introduce these new tools um, at the population level. So we have created um, three departments within this science division. The first one really is around the quality assurance of all the norms and standards that WHO produces. We will now have a centralized function. It will be an enabling and a cross-cutting function that will work with the technical departments to ensure the technical excellence, the relevance, the timeliness, as well as the potential of having more impact at the country level of all our publications. Another department will look um, we're calling it the Research for Health Department, and this is really to, to help the world to see the need for research in areas that have unmet needs, to develop some kind of a prioritization of, uh, of research needs at the country level, to have a horizon scanning function, a foresight function that will look at tools and technologies that are going to come down the pipeline within the next four to five years, a group that will look at the ethical aspects, as I mentioned, of these, uh, these new scientific innovations, and also a group that will work on research methods and on promoting more research in low-income and middle-income countries, and to help researchers there empowered to really um, feel that they are involved in setting the research priorities and also in being able to influence where the big global research dollars are flowing. The third department we have is the Department of Digital Health. And again, this has been created in response to a huge demand from the WHO member states for us to provide more guidance um, more regulatory advice um, and frameworks for all the innovations in the digital space to really start having an impact on health systems. And we know that there are many new ways in which we can enable both health workers to do their work better and also enable individuals to, to take more control of their own health and, and to be more proactive in, in promoting well-being. At this conference, you will be discussing innovations in, in pharmaceuticals as well as in technology. And obviously these issues are critical for improving the health of people around the, around the world. But we must always keep in mind that innovation in itself is never all that is required. So new technologies must be scalable, they should be sustainable, they need to be affordable and innovations in health are of value only if they can deliver wide impact in countries and accelerate progress towards the sustainable development goals. 
At WHO, we recently released our first guideline on digital health interventions. Our recommendations highlighted examples of successful interventions such as sending text reminders to pregnant women to attend antenatal care appointments and having children return for vaccinations as well as other examples where uh, digital tools have been used to track supply chain, logistics, uh, follow-up for people with chronic disease like diabetes and so on. Now, these simple and low-cost innovations can have results far beyond short-term expectations. But innovations must also demonstrate long-term improvements over traditional ways of delivering health services. So this is where really the role of research, and particularly implementation science or implementation research, comes in because we found when we were doing these guidelines that there are many areas where there is a lack of high-quality evidence. So one thing is for the innovators to really develop the tool and have a proof of concept, but the next step really is for the research funders, academic institutions, researchers, and the ministries of health to come together and say, well, if this is looks promising and can potentially really improve health outcomes, how do we go about testing it first in a proper um, you know, scientific, well-done research study, and then, you know, going ahead to look at the evidence and scaling up. And that's the only way in, in which innovations um, can start having an impact on people because we need to see that this pathway to scalability is, is clear and it's uh, the timelines really get reduced um, and that um, it, this will benefit both the innovators, the entrepreneurs, uh, but also will obviously benefit uh, public health. So we, we ne all need to work hard to make sure that access uh, becomes an integral part of the innovation value chain. Otherwise, there's a high risk that new medicines and new technologies will be available only to the privileged. And we must not expand the economic and social distance between those who benefit from innovations and those who do not. In fact, we're now you know, talking about this term called a digital divide, um, and very often it's also um, related to a gender imbalance. So we need to make sure that, that as we move into the digital space, uh, we do not create an artificial divide again between people who have access to these technologies uh, because they are well connected and people who do not. So keeping in mind also the equity considerations, the gender considerations when we think about any new innovation and how that could be integrated into the, the health system is really important. So speaking on behalf of, of WHO, I challenge you to help us to narrow this gap because the lives of many people around the world depend on it. I wish you a very successful meeting and I look forward to, to getting some feedback on how WHO can work with the, the member states and with all the other partners who have gathered here um, in order to really um, make affordable innovations a reality. Thank you very much for this opportunity.